lesson just now. Uh, the lesson I learned is when you record one of these videos, stop and save your, vi your narration every once in a while. I did not stop and save my narration, and I'm on a laptop with a dying battery, and guess what? The battery died. So I'm doing it all over again. But it gave me a chance, chance to make a couple edits on the video, so I guess there's that. Uh, one of the edits that I've made on the video, you're running this at about four times speed. Uh, it's nice country, but it's kind of spread out. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, actually an hour and a half worth of video footage that I've compressed down to about 25 minutes. And, yeah, I know there are a couple people who have complained in the comments about these long driving videos. And you know what? If you don't like them, don't watch them. They have their little niche, and that's what I'm making them for. Now, in this video, I am going to talk about small town living, but I want to hit a couple of other things first. Since I use these videos to chat. Uh, one of the things I did, uh, you, you may have seen, I posted a video on the Waterman Hemisphere. Uh, that was filmed back in January. It was the last video I filmed with, I guess we could call it my old set. Uh, I mentioned in the video last Sunday, I, I'm going to build a new set. Well, you saw a preview of it, but I still had boxes and a lot of disorder. So just this afternoon, I filmed three videos in the new set. Uh, I have spring break coming up this weekend, so I'm hoping I'll get a haircut so I can look more better. Uh, but I'm going to hopefully get a haircut and then film a few more videos, pen reviews mostly, maybe even a couple rodeos since it's spring break and I have some time to do that. Uh, so exciting things happening, right? Okay, so speaking of exciting things, I uh, have the windows open. It is March 13th, St. Patrick's Day, and... I have my windows open. <laughs> I live in North Dakota. You're not supposed to have them open. And I was even opening them back in February. We have had a very warm, very dry spring. Uh, very warm, dry. I don't even think it is spring yet, come to think of it. Very warm, dry winter. This is kind of scary, actually, for me as a gardener and for people who are in agriculture. Uh, and for those of us who might be worried about climate and such. Um, and I'll just mention, by the way, I'm also operating on not nearly enough sleep because, yeah, we just sprang ahead, so I lost an hour of sleep, but whatever, I, I, usually I can deal with that. Uh, what I can't deal with is when I wake up in a blind panic at midnight, no joke, wake up at midnight, heart pounding, thinking, oh my gosh, I just overslept. And then you stagger out of the bedroom and realize, oh, it's midnight. I still have six hours left to sleep. And go back to bed, and of course I couldn't sleep. And I finally gave up about 5 this morning and said, Well, I'm up. Hopefully I'll sleep well tonight, because tomorrow i got to deal with kids. And by the way, fun fact, since I'm an anatomy teacher also, when you don't have enough sleep, your reaction time is a lot like being drunk. So apparently I'm drunk right now. I haven't had anything to drink except coffee. A lot of coffee. I need the coffee today. But I'm drunk, so yeah. And that makes me think about the driving thing here. I would never, ever get into the car and drive after drinking. Um, you know, I'm not anti-drinking at all, but I would never do it. But now, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, look, you just drove to church and back, basically the equivalent of being drunk. Something to think about, isn't it? Uh, we, and we usually don't think about our tiredness. We're like, well, drink lots of coffee, keep the window open, blare the radio. Well, if you have an accident because you had a drink, it's just as bad as if you have an accident because you're tired. Um, all right, enough on that topic, because hypocrite right here. I, You know, I'm not a hypocrite on the drinking thing, but I am a hypocrite on the sleepy thing, as you can see right here. All right, so let's talk about the my actual topic, which is small town living. Now, we 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 passed the small town just a ways back there. It's called Rame, North Dakota. About 150 people live in Rame. I like Rame. Um, sometimes I've thought, you know, I'd like to live there. But then I think, do I really want to live there? Um, when I bought this house that I'm in right now, 
I was actually also considering possibly buying a house in rain. And then I'd have to commute to work every day, which I hate. I hate driving, actually. Believe it or not, I hate it. I, I walk in town if, as much as I can. But anyway, uh, so a small town living is... What am I trying to say? There's a lot of definitions to small town living. When I say small town, it may mean something different with somebody else. So let me give you context. I grew up in Pennsylvania in a small town. I'm setting this. This was sitting on my lap, and I was just getting tired of that. I grew up in Pennsylvania in a small town. I graduated in a class of 52 students. I, uh, my town was probably somewhere between 2,000 to 3,000 people. So, yeah, bigger than the town I live in now, which is about 1,500 people. But not by any stretch, a very big town. Uh, Rain was, as I said, is 150 people. Um, but, you know, there are people in this country who would look at Dickinson, North Dakota, or Bismarck, North Dakota, or maybe even Fargo, North Dakota, and say, oh, what lovely small towns. And I'm thinking, no, those are cities, but that's the context I grew up in. You know, when I was a kid, we'd go to the city in Olean, New York, which I think of as a city, but there's a lot of people think of it as a small town. Uh, when I was a really little kid, we used to go down to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, I think that really would classify as a city by most people's definitions, but not a very big city. And to me, you know, when do I get somewhere that big? Never. So, yeah. And you're looking at the country I live in now, which is much more rural than I grew up in. So, uh, you know, if we're going to talk small towns, we have to think about size. So I'm going to leave the small town thing pretty generic. There's a lot of people who will not live in a small town because they think there's nothing there. And I hate to say it, but they've got a point. You know, every time I go to Dickinson and grocery shop, I get jealous. Because Dickinson has such amazing grocery stores. And they're nothing compared to what would be in a big city. Uh, but I love going in, especially the fruit and vegetable section. I just love that. I go crazy and usually buy more than I can eat because I'm just like, oh, I can make this. Oh, look, they have this. Oh, there's eggplant here. Beets, Brussels sprouts, fresh beans, all kinds of peppers, lettuce, you know, Swiss chard. It's really exciting for me. Yeah, I'm weird. But you go to my small town grocery store and I will admit for a small town grocery store it's pretty good it doesn't hurt that it's almost 90 miles to Dickinson so people are kind of forced to shop here whereas if we were closer they wouldn't they'd just go to the big city and let their small town wither on the vine and die and then wonder why there's no local business whoops <laughs> so uh you know I'm not going to be too critical of my small town grocery store because they're making the best with what they have I uh, just wish there was more here. And, you know, another thing I wish we had more of was restaurants. Now, we are going to be opening a, what would we call it, Mexican Steakhouse? Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm kind of curious how it all comes together. But anyway, it's going to be opening supposedly the end of March. And we need something like that because it's basically, it's fast food here in my small town. You know, we have the really fast food. And then the sit-down fast food. Um, there was a place open that made specialty burgers, which, you know, that was kind of good. I liked the burgers, but uh, for various reasons, I'm not eating there right now. But I'm not too impressed with it. All right, so uh, we have a Subway. I do like the Subway, but that's fast food again. Uh, getting back on topic here. There's just not a lot of variety. You know, if I go just to a small city like Dickinson, there's two Mexican restaurants. One is not very good, and the other one is very good. And oddly enough, the one that's not very good is the one that's easy to get into. The one that is very good is very hard to get into. Uh, they have a Chinese restaurant. They used to have two, but they're down to one, and that's okay, because the other one wasn't that good. Um, they have Thai food. There's a number of different kinds of sit-down places. You know, it's fun. You know, if you want fast food, they have that too. And they have your normal chains, like your Applebee's, which I'm not a fan of. But it's great. 
And then I come back home and there's no choices. So I would like more choices of places to eat. You know, as far as things to do, I guess I could go hang out at the bar, but I'm not a bar person, so there's just not a lot of things to do. So you have to be better at, enter at enter wow. You have to be better at entertaining yourself if you live in a small town. Now, uh, there are some real perks to small town life, which I'll get to at the end here. Uh, but I'll say one thing that's really changed small town life, even from when I was a kid. I'm not that old. I'm 40 years old. Uh, exactly, for, well, a couple months over, but I turned 40 in November. I am exactly 40, and when I was a kid, you didn't have the internet. What we're doing right now, this whole watching me on your computer, didn't happen. I mean, maybe I could have taped it on a Betamax or a VHS and mailed it to you. But uh, just talking to somebody in North Dakota on video like this just wasn't going to happen. So I think that's very interesting. That's a big change. You know, so online has provided a lot of social outlets that maybe you don't have. You know, if I lived in New York City, I could probably have my fountain pen friends that I hang out with and do talk fountain pens. I could have my book friends. We talk about writing because I do write. Uh, we, I, I, I could have my photography friends. We could talk photography. I could have my, you know, whatever interest it is, I could find my people uh, living in small town North Dakota. By the way, you see the traffic. That has to do with why I like small town life. And we'll come back to that. Usually I don't meet any traffic on this road. Yeah, one car and I'm talking about traffic. But I'm serious. I usually don't meet any. And we're going to see three. But... Uh, you know, so we've got, with the internet, we have social outlets in small towns that we didn't have before. You know, I have my friends, not a lot of friends, but I have my friends in my small town. And I and there's a wider circle of people that I'll talk to, and uh, I guess you could call them acquaintances. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not maybe going to be that interested in my weird stuff like the fountain pens and photography and uh, my writing. You know, I think if I started talking fountain pens to these people, their eyes would just kind of glaze over. They go, he's talking about his weird pens. So uh, that's that's a nice thing the Internet brings to you. Another nice thing the Internet brings to you is the ability to shop. Uh, people will say, you know, as much as I was just criticizing the grocery stores here, and, it, you know, it's an economic thing. There's no way the local super value can have all that. But as uh, much as I criticize shopping, I do try to shop locally because I want businesses here in town that I can walk to. And uh, that's why I won't live in a town like Rame. There are no businesses there. There's nothing I can walk to. So I would have to get in my car and drive over to my town anyway. See, here's another vehicle. I don't like that. I want to be able to shop locally. So that limits the kind of small town I'll live in. But I'm willing to shop for some things online, just not the basics. So I, I like uh, Amazon for my books. I, I have several places where I buy my fountain pens. I know some people on Fountain Pen Network are like, you have to shop your local brick-and-mortar store. Support them, because it's all going online. Well, you know what? I don't have a brick-and-mortar store. I could go to Fargo. There's some stores there that have a couple of fountain pens in the corner. But I haven't been to Fargo in a few years, because that's all the way across the state. You know what? I'm not going to support my local brick-and-mortar fountain pen store. I'm going to shop online. I have to. Or else there are no fountain pens for me. Can't support my local bookstore either because I don't have one. My town's not big enough to support one. I, have, you know, I don't, even if more people were readers, it's just not feasible in this size town. So I shop online. So it is what it is. Uh, by the way, I've cut back to double speed instead of four times speed here because we're going to, well, we're in the city of Rame and I just want to show you around and mention one of the things about small towns I like. But anyway, my short version is the internet has opened up a lot of options. Now, I saw a lot of cars down here. I forgot why. It's just like, is the bar open on Sunday? And then I got to the highway and remembered why and turned around. Uh, but, yeah, here they are. Uh, where was I? Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I'm working without a script today, which that bugs me because I usually outline these things and I'm not outlined and I'm rambling. That's what happens when I don't outline. But anyway, uh, I'll tell you what's going on there because I'm 
going to forget that. Then I'll come back to my story and hopefully I'll remember what it was. So what's going on there is there's a medical benefit for a woman. Uh, she's I think she has cancer and she's been going through radiation treatments. Now I don't know her. I I've seen her, but I do know her grandchildren because I've taught them. Uh, her daughter-in-law actually just died this week. I think it was a hemorrhage in her stomach, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. She died this week. That's the main thing. And so the city of Rain is really rallying behind this family, and uh, I think it's wonderful. And so one of the things they're doing is they're doing, yes, everything in North Dakota is a city. So, yes, Rain is a city, even though it's only 150 people. But so what I circled around here to do, go to is they're doing a b b benefit breakfast slash lunch. And yeah, I left a 20 in the plate and I saw some people left $100 bills or $50 bills in the plate. So I think that's great. And that's part of the small town thing. Yes, they do these benefits in cities too. So, you know, that's nothing we have over on a city. But here's what we do have over on the city. Like I said... I taught her grandchildren. I know her son. I know her daughter-in-law that just died. Uh, and I knew her face and her name, even though I don't really know her. And, the, and this isn't even in my town. I mean, I live in the town 15 miles away, but all these kids go to my town, my school in my town, because this town is now too small to have a high school of its own. So I know, and plus I go to church over here. So I know these people. And that's the real nice thing in a small town, is you do know more more of the people around you. Now, there are times that I think it would be nice if I could just disappear and be anonymous once in a while, but I can't. <laughs> my, even in my small town, I can't. In the rain, you definitely can't. But, you know, what's the benefit of that on the other hand? You know, there are things... It would be nice, but then at the same time, what am I trying to hide? You know, I'm not somebody who's going to stagger around town drunk and go barf in somebody's yard, and everybody says, hey, isn't that your science teacher? You know, I don't do that anyway, and I feel no desire to. And I can't stand people that do feel the desire to do that. So I guess, you know, what? where's the benefit of anonymity? You know, it has been nice a few times to reinvent myself as a teacher and as a person, and I did that by moving into a different town. <laughs> so, you know, I guess I can't really reinvent myself here quickly and easily because people are always, well, that's the old you. And yeah, I've been going through some changes as I age. My political views have changed. My religious views have changed. And it's kind of hard to crawl out of that box and everybody thinks, well, this is you, Mr. Squirrel, not this. What's happened to you? Well, they'll just have to get used to it. <laughs> I uh, actually lost my temper with a little kid at uh, I'm yearbook advisor and we're doing pho photographs I lost my temper with a little kid there and I guess I'm a lot more stern than I used to be sometimes you know I don't want to be the mean teacher but my gosh the lady doing the photographs said smile and he wouldn't smile and she's trying to argue with him get him to smile so it's like don't argue with him he's a little kid just tell him what to do so I did <laughs> He didn't have the best smile, but at least I got it over with and got him, got the line moving again. You know, that's something I wouldn't have done when I was younger. I'd have been, oh, it's a little kid. I can't be mean. But <laughs> I'm over that now. If I make him cry, I make him cry. Uh, sometimes they need people to stand up to them. Because they're little kids. Stand up to them. Seriously, don't let a little kid run the show. Don't let a big kid run the show. You're the adult. They're the kid. You know, there's ways of dealing with them that are more effective than others. Uh, arguing with them doesn't work, but uh, I won't say my way was the best either, but at least I got the line moving. <laughs> so uh, anyway, back on topic. So uh, anyway, small towns, you know people. That's a big benefit. That's a huge benefit. You're surrounded by people that you know. Uh, I really don't remember what story I was telling as, as we were driving through rain, so sorry. Why did I? Oh! This is the town of Griffin. This is definitely too small for me. But I think this is, this house on the right here is kind of cool because it's abandoned. There's an abandoned wagon out front, just kind of neat. One of these days it'll cave in and it'll be lost to the prairie. But uh, for now, it's kind of a neat landmark. 
on the highway. Okay, so uh, as far as, I think, oh, I remember now. Why I don't like rain. Yeah, okay, that sounded horrible. I do like rain. I like the people in it, but I don't want to live there. Because there is a point where the town is too small for me. Uh, I want to be able to walk to shop. Now, I don't have to be able to get all the exotics. I just want to be able to walk to get the basics that I need. I just noticed that the camera's over here and I've been looking at my picture. So, I guess I'll look at the camera for a while. That's one of my things with my moot videos is I don't make good eye contact. But anyway, I, I like to be able to walk everywhere to do my shopping, and I don't. Uh, if, I, if I lived in rain, I would have to drive everywhere. I want to go grocery shopping? Well, there used to be a grocery store there. There was one there when I moved to, to this area. But uh, it closed because I guess not enough people to support it. And a lot of people that could be supporting it drive to my town because that's the bigger grocery store. If my town was closer to Dickinson, might not have a grocery store. I was up in Belfield Tuesday uh, with Science Olympiad. And we won second in the region, by the way, not to brag. But uh, I was talking to a guy at the Dairy Queen there because I was so excited that, yeah, I let the kids talk me into Dairy Queen. <laughs> I shouldn't have, but I did. Um, he lives in Medora, which has nothing. You know, a lot of tourist shops, but this time of year there's nothing open. Uh, that is the touristy area of North Dakota. And uh, he was in Belfield eating out at the Dairy Queen. And uh, he, he mentioned that when he has to grocery stop, he either has to drive over to Beach, North Dakota, which is a long drive to a small town grocery store, or over to Dickinson, which is a nice long drive. Uh, admittedly, either way, it's on interstate, which I guess makes it fast if you like that kind of driving. I hate driving on interstates worse than I hate driving. But uh, it is, I hate that. I You know, if I forget something like... You know, if I go to make this barley thing tonight, and I need tomatoes, as long as I get there before 5, the grocery store is there in Bowman. Yeah, I guess I gave away my name of my town, but you're about to see the name anyway. So I need, I want to live in a town big enough to have the stores. You know, I, I'm kind of sad about that Shopco there and that Ace that are outside of town. I miss having a hardware store on Main Street and having a Duck Walls on Main Street. You know, I, I prefer businesses on Main Street that I can walk to. I hate the, like you go to a Walmart and you just about have to drive from store to store because they're so spread out. I like a Main Street because you can park somewhere and then you walk up and down the Main Street, do your thing. Or, like I do in my town, I'll just walk from my house to Main Street and walk around and do my shopping. Can't get too much if you're walking, but, you know, I like that. I, uh, when, when it's the wall, all the big box retailers, your Walmart, your Menards, your Barnes and Noble, which, you know, there's no Barnes and Noble anywhere near me, but you know, all these big box stores, then you park at the Walmart parking lot, then you either walk across these long parking lots or you drive over to the next store. I hate that kind of shopping. Of course, I don't like shopping anyway, so there is that. We have a very nice museum. That used to be a very nice steakhouse. There's a story behind that, but it's closed. That's the museum on the right. Uh, that's our city hall, which is a very nice city hall. Uh, our green elevators for a town this size aren't that big. I'm going to do a quick spin down Main Street. I actually stopped at the grocery store and got some five-gallon reverse osmosis water because the water in this town is disgusting. It makes horrible coffee. Uh, the steakhouse will be in that red building that's multiple stories. I won't identify every store here. But the old library just barely on your right. Bar. We actually had a bar close. It went out of business. I I consider that a good thing. You know, I'm not a fan of people go to the bar, get drunk, and then they drive home. I don't understand that. But uh, I, you know, I know some people like to stop at the bar and unwind, so whatever. There's the one that closed. It's a crystal. I... Uh, you know, nothing against the crystal or the owners. I just, I've never been in it, and I guess now I never will. So this is one, we have two small grocery stores. This is one of them. The other one has been closed for a while due to medical issues. I'm hoping it reopens because well, I like having choices. Not many towns this size have two grocery stores. But anyway, so I stopped here, got some stuff. Since I had the car, I got some reverse osmosis water. I, I tried refilling one five gallon reverse osmosis thing there and I only made that mistake once 
and I'll never walk home with one of those ever again. I'll drive for that. Uh, this is where I bank, and I'm going to end the video here because uh, I don't want to give too much personal identifying stuff. So I hope that was interesting, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you later.